Welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course, and in this module we're going to be looking at the calendar by Talon. Now this is an interesting calendar. You've seen now several different types of calendars available inside of the Power BI Custom Visuals gallery. This new one gives you a different perspective where it'll actually look almost like a full year calendar where you can see values across each month for an entire year. And so you can kind of see that layout here, and you're able to, of course, filter using it. You can actually select values or select days in a month and it will filter and do cross highlighting and other visuals that you have. You can multi-select and select a range of days if you wanted to as well. You also have the ability to zoom in on particular months. So say for example, I wanted to zoom in on April, 2017. I would simply click on that inside the calendar view that you see on the right hand side, and then it would focus just in on that one month that I care about, okay? It, like I said, you can also highlight certain date ranges which allow you to filter any other item inside your report based on that selection that you have inside of the calendar. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at where we can go download and use this custom visual. We'll actually, uh, actually pull it in from the Power BI desktop itself, and then we'll walk you through a scenario of how you might use this. All right, so the scenario that we have for this example is we're going to be pulling in some data that's actually prison data. So we're going to be looking at data for correctional institutes in the state of Connecticut. Why Connecticut? Because that's where there's some public data that I found very easily on data.gov. That's why we're using this data set. And so our first step, of course, is we're going to go look underneath the uh, Get Data section here and pull in from an Excel file. And the file that we want to use here is called Correctional Facility Daily Population Count. And so basically what we're going to be doing is finding between all these correctional institutes inside uh, or in Connecticut what the daily population looks like and how it fluctuates and how it changes over time. All right, so we'll hit Open here. We're going to go connect to this data set, and we'll uh, tell it the spreadsheet that we want is this daily population one. And we'll hit Load pull this data now into the Power BI desktop. All right, now this is going to load into our data model. You can see it show up on the right-hand side in our fields list. We can start to use this data set. But before we do that, let's go ahead and also bring in the visual that we want to use. So we're going to select that we want to bring in a custom visual from the store. And to find this custom visual, probably the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and search for calendar. And again, you're going to see that there are several other calendars available to you. I've actually covered these other calendars in previous videos. But the one that we're going to be doing today is this calendar by Talon. All right, so we'll select that we want to add that calendar visual into the Power BI desktop. And you can see that it successfully imported it. And we can see the visual now here on the right hand side in the visualizations pane. So we'll go ahead and select that visual. And we'll make it take up about half the screen here, roughly. And then what we want to see in here is you'll see it's pretty limited in that there's not really a whole lot that you need to pass into it. And that's fine because there's not really a whole lot you need to pass into it. But you do need to pass into it a date. So there's a date field, obviously, that will tie in the date. And then you need to put some kind of measure in the value section. So for us, what I care to look at is I want to look at an, aver an average of the total population. So I'm going to find the total facility population here, and I'm going to tell it to go ahead and stick that into our value section. And before we even worry about it, I'm going to go ahead and flip it to an average, like so. There we go. And so now I'm seeing the average population for our facilities across the year. Uh, now you'll notice here there's a couple things that we can highlight in here. You can zoom in into a particular month. So if we wanted to look just at April, we could select April and it focuses in just at on April. You can also highlight certain days. So you can hold down Control and multi-select, or you can hold down Shift and kind of do a cross selection of multiple days here very easily. And so that would filter any other items we have on our report. So let's show you how that works. If I were to head back, go back to the full the year view here, and bring in say another uh, item to our report, maybe a line chart. And in my line chart, what I'd like to see is really the change across time of the facility population. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in, go ahead and select that again. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the date to my line chart. And I'm going to look at it just as dates, not a hierarchy. And then we're going to look at the total population for each of these dates. And let's make it an average again. Just We're, we're caring about average for this example. All right, now the other thing that I'd like to do in here also is I'd like to see uh, some kind of filter so I can look at different facilities. And so what I can do is I can go over to where we have our slicer and bring in a filter based on the facility name. And then that way I can easily filter down based on the different facilities. So maybe I want to filter down to the Correctional Institute. So I can select and filter by the Brooklyn Correctional Institute, or maybe I want to filter by, uh, let's say, Cheshire here, right here. And I can filter by that, and I can see the different values that return back. I get, uh, again, you can filter by any one of these. So I can select any one of these, and you can see it affects not only the uh, a line chart, but also the calendar. And then again, in addition to doing that, we can also select values inside of the calendar. And maybe I want to select a range of a couple months here. 
and you can see those several months are brought back in our line chart even though I filtered them in the calendar view. So it's kind of a nice way to be able to filter calendar type data as well. Uh, the other thing that we can do, you know, maybe I want to do, and this is really more of a general Power BI feature I can do, maybe I want to predict what my future outcome looks like for this Osborne Correctional Institute. And again, this is a standard Power BI feature, but I can select this line chart, go underneath the analytics pane here, and underneath analytics, I can add in a little forecast line. And I can forecast what the next several months or several days, actually, it's based on days here in this case, but what the next 10 days look like in the future. Or I can bump that up to something like the next 20 days if I wanted to and hit apply, and then it'll actually try and attempt to predict 20 days into the future. It's basing this off of uh, points. That points is basically a number of units. And because we're looking at this at a day level, it's forecasting 20 days into the future. And again, I can kind of go back and forth between different facilities here. So I can see this one. It looks like the Brooklyn facility. I can see what the values are that we're predicting here. I could also go to the one we did before Cheshire here and see how we're predicting a, a change in values. So pretty interesting. It's a nice capability you have built in. Again, you can use something like the forecasting line or just a line in general with it as well to kind of really in influence the way that this can be even more useful. But the, the main point here that we want to show in this one is the calendar visual and all the neat capabilities that you have with this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Now, I will uh, point out there is not a ton that you can do in the format section. Uh, you'll see in the format section that you have where you can change the cell colors, and that's about it. So here I can change the cell color that's being used to really anything else that I would prefer. Uh, but beyond that, there's not a lot you can change as far as the calendar visual itself underneath the format section. Uh, you can, of course, uh, add a title to this. You can make some adjustments there. But those are some of the general things that you have in every single one of the visuals. There's not really much beyond what you see for this underneath the cell color section that's specific to the calendar visual that we're using today. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one and look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module.